Welcome to the uh, Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting, Wednesday, August 7th, 2024. Um, we have one member from the public, which is Kent, which Kent doesn't, it's not really, I mean, doesn't really feel like a member of the public, but Kent's a member of the public. Uh, um, Kent, do you have anything that you'd like to add at this time? No. Okay. All right. Um, did uh, folks have a chance to review the minutes? Yep. Okay. I need just another minute or two. Take your time. We're we're doing Thank fine. Yep. Thank you. Hey Jordan, we're okay. just at, we're at the point of reviewing the minutes. What's going on? Not, not much. <laughs> it's cooler it's, today. Yeah, it's so much better. So nice. I'm done. All right, J Jordan, did you have a chance to review the minutes? I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, are there are there any comments, corrections, amendments? No, none. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, could we get a motion to uh, accept the minutes as presented? So moved. I'll Ooh. second. All right, Jordan moved the moved it. Molly seconded. Um, any discussion? Seeing none. Bonnie, could you uh, do a roll call, please? Sure can. Uh, Rich Parasoliti. Uh Yes. Susan. Yes. Molly. Yes. Richard Parrish? Yes. And Jordan? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I'm just trying to find my calendar. 27th. Okay. Uh, oop. Sorry. Um. All right. So let's see. Uh, tree Warden Chair Report. So I have a meeting... Uh, with the mayor and Carolyn on the 27th of August uh, to uh, discuss the significant tree ordinance uh, and moving it forward and uh, the path that the mayor would like us to take moving it forward, I guess, would probably be how I would frame the meeting. Um, and then I will be able to report to you after um, that meeting, our, our first meeting in uh, September, which will be... <clears throat> I haven't got that far yet. Mm, I guess September 4th would be our first meeting. So I'll have an update for you at that time. Um, when you say the path to move it forward, do you mean just like logistically what has to happen or, or do they have changes they still want to make to it? I don't, I don't believe there's any changes. I think logistically, like how it's moved forward, whether it's sponsored by the mayor or co-sponsored by the planning board those are some of the questions mm. that i have mm. um and um depending upon how the mayor would like to move it forward i think would is going to depend like where do we want to move it forward with having the planning board having a conversation at the planning board level prior to and getting all of their support mm. or does do we just does the mayor want to just introduce it uh and on the council floor which then would kick it to the planning board for its public process uh mm -hmm. or actually be kicked to a uh sorry excuse me it would be kicked to a uh co uh committee on legislative matters i believe and then it makes its process that way and then the planning board because it would be a joint hearing between the planning they they can be either joint hearings for between the planning board and the city council or it can be a separate hearing but there has to be a public hearing that involves the planning board because we are recommending that we update the zoning ordinance. Mm. So th those are the, some of the questions that I just mm. where how we and how we want to what's the best way to navigate. Um, and yeah. the other, unfortunately, the, uh, we were not able to meet earlier in the month. Uh, the meeting had to be canceled, so we rescheduled it for the end of this month. So we're still within the month. Um, mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, uh, so we had 
I had a public shade tree hearing on Monday the 5th at 2 p.m. at the end of Glenwood Avenue, which uh, abuts the 39-day avenue project. Um, mm -hmm. That has been a project that's been approved by the planning board. There is a 20, I think it's a 26-inch Norway maple mm -hmm. that um, the developer is uh, asking approval to remove. So we had a hearing. We went through the MGL 87 process. We had one objection. So now I'm in the process of uh, trying to uh, um, get a meeting with the mayor to discuss the disposition of the tree. So if if the mayor chooses to remove it, then that is within uh, her power under MGL 87. Or if she chooses not to, that's also under her power for MGL 87. Um, I, I did work with the developer to try to figure out a way to save this tree. Um, because a 39-day avenue, it's going to be a one-way um, entrance and one-way exit. So people mm -hmm. will be either coming in off a of day avenue and exiting off of Glenwood or the other way around. I can't remember. But the tree is dead smack in the middle of the public right-of-way. Mm -hmm. So even if we shifted the uh, driveway to the left or the right of the tree, the amount of uh, impact that the excavation would have on the tree's um uh, but then the critical root zone and the structural roots would be so severe the tree wouldn't survive. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation to the developer was to, you know, uh, request a public shade tree hearing, e even with the even with trying to do the best and most up to date tree protection measures, air spading and root pruning. There was it, it's just too close. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's that's where we're, that's that's that particular uh report. Um. The other, I'm in the process of scheduling another public shade tree hearing for 64 Fern Street, um, working with the Daily Hampshire Gazette to get that advertised. Oh, um, oh I hate that. Oh, those pitch pines, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I hate to see them go. I do as well. And uh, unfortunately, oh. I believe the way that, that that lot was parceled out is that the zero lot line is on the right hand side. So if you're looking at the property, if you're probably Molly, you're probably familiar with it, right? So I'm very looking, familiar with it. If you're looking at the right hand side, the zero lot line is on the right. So that means the prop the house can be pushed all the way to the right. So mm -hmm. the driveway is now the middle of the driveway is right where the pitch pine. The one there's two pitch pines there. One of them is going to have to be removed to accommodate the driveway. Um well, there's more than two. There's like five pitch pines there. All yes. Together. There, there are, but there's only two that are public. The other, the other ones are private. Yeah. Oh, I'm. It's funny you mention that. It's funny you mention that because I mentioned the same thing to the property owner who fill out the application. I said, "Yeah, it's really." I said, "I've been trying to cultivate pitch pines at Spring Grove Cemetery forever, and you know, it's the same soil um, profile." And uh, yeah. There, there, it's you know it's a great it would it would have probably if it was if the whole area was not developed it probably would be its own little pitch pine plantation oh yeah i think so because behind those houses on fern street is more pitch pine and it's really sandy over there yep so it would sort of like be the uh similar soil uh to the montague plains yeah so oh i yeah. i don't know what i'm gonna do when those trees go i'm gonna be very upset yes. so that's an uh, infill house going there or something yeah yes. Yep, density they housing. Buy the too, when they sold it. Yes. And yeah. it's this little narrow lot that's just basically has these really nice pitch pines on it. Yeah, I'm looking at them on the street view. Mm -hmm. So, so that that will be uh, mm. made to be determined. I I'll let you know. It's probably going to happen at the end of August. I'm going away for a week and a half. Um, and I don't think I'll be able to schedule everything right when I return. So it'll probably be the last week of August, maybe beginning of September. Um, but they are well aware of the cost to remove it. They're well aware of the cost of the mitigation. The mitigation, I believe, is 40, 4,500. Let me just double check. I have a note in here. Mm. Yeah, it's forty. Um, it's forty five hundred dollars. It's a twenty. It's a twenty inch. Mm -hmm. So that's that's on the um, agenda in the future. 
Uh, I'm I'm headed to. Uh, well, I did everyone see the email that I sent you with the article attached from the Washington Post? I sent you. Oh, I saw it, but I haven't read it. Yeah, it's really it's really interesting, and we can discuss it later on down the line. But it was really interesting. Um, the study this study was done in in, uh, in China. Uh, the research was done in China, and basically uh, what the researchers are saying, and I sort of highlighted it in yellow. I don't have it in front of me, but um, they are excited excited in it to find out that the um, the forested landscape that is right outside um, the urban heat island actually has the ability to diffuse the urban heat island effect greater than we originally anticipated. Yeah. And so while we're we're concentrating on trying to plant trees in the urban heat island area, which is wonderful. Um, the paper, the way that I understood the paper to read in the article is that they were encouraging people to plant trees right outside and keep that forested landscape um, right mm -hmm. outside the urban heat island because it had, um, a, I don't, I want to say greater effect, but but a great a, a great impact on absorbing those nighttime temperatures. Mm. Um, so I, I, I encourage you to read it. I thought it was interesting. I did attach the research paper so you can, you can rifle through it, but mm. just kind of made me think a little bit about, you know, what we're trying to do by planting within the urban heat island versus, and, and the, and the amount of struggle and stress, um, that the trees endure trying to just get themselves established versus picking planting locations and protecting because we also need to think about the protection piece of this right protecting the existing trees that are right on the very edge of um uh, the urban heat island which um would be for example like uh projects that like for example the view avenue project is a good example of that where there's multiple mature norway norway spruces that are going to be removed to build units this is a planning project mm -hmm. Where the significant tree ordinance at the at, we have presently in the books kicks in, but that would be an example of the why this research might be very interesting to better understand what the outskirts of the forest and landscape do for the urban heat island, not just what's in the urban heat island. Because the train of thought, right, has always been like create park like settings um, to break up the urban heat island, plant masses of trees in the middle of urban heat island, but the paper sort of doesn't say not to do that, but the paper says that the benefits of the landscape around it is just as important, if not more important. Mm. So, mm. Um, it's a six to nine mile radius. Oh. Yeah. Can have a 30% um, mm. impact on the intensity of the heat island. Wow. Ken, Ken did you get a copy of that? I. I did. I think I sent it to you as well. I, I did. It's a little hard to believe that it says, I mean, the first sentence of the article is that rural land could help cool cities by up to almost 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Like, what? What? And, yeah. And I don't, Maybe know they, what, wow. I don't know what it means to reduce the urban heat ion intensity yeah. by 30 percent. So I'll have to read the paper. Yes, I, I have yeah. to read the paper with a quick yeah, you, ha you have to read the, the I sent the article, the preface, the research paper. The research paper, fortunately, was was a cited source, so it was free. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I figured you could all sort of read it and sort of maybe come yeah. back or send me an email in your in your thoughts or maybe just think mm -hmm. about. It. So, I mean, there's a lot of interesting research out there surrounding the urban heat island. Um, and I just happened to stumble on that one accidentally. But um so on Friday, I'm traveling to Atlanta uh, to go to the urban, uh, to the, oh my gosh, the ISA International Conference down in Atlanta, Georgia. So there will be, uh, hopefully I'll come back with some more, you know, up-to-date information from research that's been done uh, across the world because all 19 chapters of ISA, which is worldwide, will be represented. And this is the 100th anniversary. So there's a lot of guest speakers uh, from uh, countries all around the world, uh, a lot of researchers. So it should be really interesting. So, um, so I will report back with my findings if I 
find some good stuff, which I'm sure I will. Right. And exciting. Yeah, it is. It is exciting. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think I did tell you that we received the mitigation and maybe I didn't tell you what we did receive all the mitigation for all the trees removed on Turkey Hill Road. I may have reported that out, but I don't remember at our last meeting. I did. I think I did. It was in the minutes, actually. So I'll take, can take that. We can redact. We can redact that. Um, the other thing I just wanted to talk about quickly is that the tree plantings that we have done this past year seem to be holding their own. Unless I'm missing something, Rich. Right? You're you're saying the same thing. Yeah, everything's looking good. There's, I've only seen a few dead trees in the whole city compared to. The a large number last year. So yeah, things are looking good. Okay. Yep. And um, we haven't really done, we've done some supplemental watering when we had a little bit of a drought period. Um, like we had two weeks when it really didn't rain very much. And we, um, Abby and Brooke went out and did some supplemental watering. And then we, we moved a couple of, uh, we interchanged a couple of the, um, the tree diapers to, uh, enlarge them to make them larger and soak them overnight. So they actually held a little more water. So, I mean, the growth is, the growth is, the growth is phenomenal. Anybody has any time, take a ride or take a walk through village Hill. So I went there today to go look at a couple of the ash trees that we planted that were planted in 2008, where we planted, we did the succession planting of the uh, sweet gum moraines just to see how they were doing. And we have to take a few of the ashes down, but the, the, the other canopy that's there is intense. It's thick. It's lush. It has some of the streets have like canopy over them. It's pretty, pretty uh, Olander in particular, because it's late has elms on both sides. But if you're looking for a cool place to hang out on a hot day, that's a nice place to walk. So our, our efforts are, um, our efforts are uh, fruitful, uh, proving fruitful. I've been watching the Jackson Street. We had some mortality there. It's a really tough spot, and they I think they're still alive. Yes. Which is a good indication because that's the that soil is really bad. I don't know what was under what gravel, horrible soil. Yeah, it's it's not it's the the tree belt's not really good soil. And thank you, Sue, for saying that because it just reminded me to give you also an update on our sidewalk construction projects that have been going around the city. So um, there's sidewalk replacement on North Elm Street between the hospital and um, Hatfield Street. Um, there is a sidewalk replacement on uh, North Main Street, sidewalk replacement on Chestnut Street, and sidewalk replacement on North Maple Street. So um, all of the, uh, you know, all the trees have been protected. They have uh, multiple different types of protection on them based upon the, the amount of excavation or the type of work they're doing there. Um, all those streets will also be milled and overlaid. So there's work in the roadway. It's not full depth reconstruction. So it's just a milling of an inch and a half of blacktop and replacement and new curbing. So Wait, are you uh, saying the road, the road is going to be redone too, or just the sidewalk? No, sidewalk and road. Yes. Oh. Uh -huh. So with that said, um, I was, we, I walked with the Northeast paving is the company that's actually doing the work for the city and they are doing everything from the excavation of the old sidewalk to the mm -hmm. air spading of the tree pits. And I'll explain that in a second to um, putting new um, gravel grade or new CU soil. Uh, in these tree pits and also putting either um, standard uh, blacktop or porous pavement, depending upon the location. So I spent a lot of, spent a lot of time with the vendor um, when they first came on board to get the tree protection correct. But what, what we found pleasantly found is that on North Elm street where they've installed all CU soil, they actually air spaded underneath the sidewalk where all of those London plane trees were planted and about two feet down, there were roots that were like this. They were actually traveling not under the side, you know, under the sidewalk, but you know, a good foot and a half below the sidewalk hardscape 
into the front lawns. So what we what the contract requires them is to retrofit all of those locations with structural soil, CU soil from Cornell. Wow. Hmm. Can you say the locations, North Elm to the hospital? Yep. Yes. Uh, by so, the hospital so, to Hatfield Street. Yes. Yep. Uh, and then Chestnut Street. And then uh, North Maple, the whole length, with the Thank exception. You. And then North North Main Street, which there's not a lot of public shade trees on North Main Street. So mainly it's North Elm that's impacted, parts of Chestnut Street, and then all of North Maple Street up to the um, up to the Casket Company back driveway. I think so. They have they have done a really nice job and. Um, they basically took a, a tremendous amount of time. I, I stayed with them on uh, for like half a day on North Elm Street, sort of worked with them, watched them do the air spading. Um, they didn't do any root pruning except for very some very small fibrous roots. They kept all the major roots intact. They were very mm -hmm. gentle with them. Then they actually put the structural soil over the root systems, under the root system, sort of chinked the CU soil in there. And then uh, they covered over the uh, uh, CU soil with plastic and they actually used plywood to cover it over in case it rained because hmm. structural soil can't needs to be covered and it has to be used within so many days when it's in a stockpile oh hmm. according to the manufacturer and then they came back and they 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 put their uh, gravel grade um if they needed to, to to sort of shim or level the blacktop right over the sea of soil some places they didn't have to do that and then they paved the sidewalk um, in sections with porous pavement uh, and uh, sorry, in blacktop and they left sections alone where the porous pavement is going to come later. So the root systems were well taken care of. So I, I was impressed. Um, and this is, go ahead, Jordan. Sorry. Yeah. Rich, where are they sourcing the CU soil? Uh, it's coming from the only supplier in Massachusetts. I, and I'm not, I, I want to say it's Reed Custom Soil, but that might be a different company name now. But it is it is it is specked out in our specifications that they have to use. It's a proprietary purpose. Right, right. I know there's a few different folks that make it um, different locations. Yeah, I, I it's some. I think it's Reed, but I don't think Reed is the name of the company any longer. Okay. But it's the, it's the same material they used on Warfield Place. Awesome. Um, Thanks for the report and thanks for keeping a close eye on them because that's a lot of resources and we want it to benefit the trees to the um, optimal. Amount. Well, I mean, I, you know, I think, I think the, this is this, you know, the, the DPWs and the city's desire to, to try to preserve all these tree trees and, and don't forget we planted 2,500 trees yeah. everywhere. And now we're going back and we're doing sidewalk work because we need to create ADA compliant sidewalks where there aren't either no sidewalks or sidewalks that are just in complete disrepair um, and spending the time to look at every tree and look at every tree differently. And it just is pretty impressive. I wouldn't have, you know, 30 years ago, this wouldn't happen. They would cut the roots and go by. And so it's definitely, it's definitely different. And then the mature trees that already exist, uh, they are they are also retrofitting those to the best of their ability. Um, obviously, you can't do a lot of excavation, especially if you have a root flare that goes right underneath the sidewalk. You know, you really have to excavate very gingerly with the air spade and put at least um, a certain amount of structural soil back in there, but you're not getting like that two and a half foot depth just because the root mass is so large. Um, and that so that treatment is happening as well. Some of the some of the trees where they haven't grown and they're still young, they are putting in the structural soil and then they're going right by them with uh, blacktop. And, the, and, you know, the, the thought of that is that the root systems will actually migrate through the structural soil and not actually get between the blacktop and the um, gravel is what really causes the sidewalks to heave. Hmm. Does so, this contractor have like dedicated staff that this is kind of like they're, they're you know, experts on, on staff with the yep, CU litigation? Uh, yes. The, so yes and no. The Chad, the foreman, who's uh, really uh, is very interested in this work, is uh, really got them, got quite a education. They, they sent them videos to watch. Nice. Um, so that they are, um, 
sort of cutting edge. This is the first project they've used CU soil with, sort of like when Warner Brothers did Warfield Place, it was the first time they had used it. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's um, he and a crew have been excellent, very dedicated and, and doing a good job. And I just go and spot, do spot inspections. Fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's like a grand experiment, you know, but it works because Cornell has proven over the last 35 years that it does really, truly work. Yes, Molly. Yeah. What do they do about and were there what did the situation occur where there were roots from big trees that had raised up the sidewalk and made lumps in the sidewalk? How do they handle that? They remove the they remove all the blacktop. They don't depending upon what they find. Um, they may air spade and remove some of the gravel that's there and put structural soil back in there and lock it in. But what do they do? They make the sidewalk go up and over yes. the root. Yeah. So what oh. they have to do is when, you know, we, you're thinking of like a sidewalk that's like this. Yeah. So when they remove the sidewalk, they have the ability now to actually change the the, the approaches. Oh, as long, okay. As long as it doesn't exceed a certain percentage. Ah, uh, uh-huh. And then with in those situations, that's where they would use porous pavement. So porous pavement has that flexibility. Oh, that's great. So they're not just trying to do a flat sidewalk. No, no, no. Because Never. in a situation like that, you, you know, many years ago we would just take a chainsaw yeah just right. cut things out you know like we were you know notching a piece of lumber to you know <laughs> yeah that's great that's great yeah. that they're doing that so I, I thought you would be interested i i will have some i'll when i get some i have some photographs but i will i'm waiting for chad to send me some more of the work photographs and i will share them with you so you can sort of see mm. what 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 they did you know great Great. What is the, um, is there a maintenance schedule for the permeable pavement or I'm sorry, you called it something else. Oh, it's por a porous pavement. Porous Perme pavement. I, yeah. Permeable pavement, I think it's a trademark name. So porous pavement, okay. is sort of, that's just habit. Sorry. Um, but it's the I, same thing. No, you said porous. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you at this point, no, there's not a maintenance schedule, but there needs to be one because we need to vacuum. They need to be vacuumed out. Hmm. So it's only about Warfield because they they are up on you know yeah the list. they you know that's the first rollout we had of it and yeah uh, actually right the first here. rollout is on um, Pleasant Street oh 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 but that that was a small piece but I mean we're gonna see more and more of this uh, because um, people are you know really asking the city to uh, not only uh, repave the roads but re replace and repair miles of sidewalk that are haven't been done in years is that a special machine or uh the no the porous pavement is sort of mixed uh in a uh, drum type concrete mixer oh i meant for the maintenance no it's a vacuum <laughs> shop vac oh, oh okay so the city has the equipment yeah it's and just the time and labor yep. yep just a matter of going over there with a little generator and a shop vac and just once a year, just sucking out each section to get the sand and the fines out from when it rains and et cetera. Kind of a nice retirement job. Might be something I might do. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, so that's that's going along nicely. So I'll get you some photographs. And then the last thing, I'm over time, I'm sorry, but we have a little bit of time, I think, is that I did... Uh, I did spend uh, a couple hours uh, in Cummington last Wednesday. I gave a presentation on our sort of our state of affairs, how we got to where we are today with our program, um, the players that were involved. And then I did 25 or 28 slides of different trees, uh, you know, different trees we've planted all around the city so it it's a nice presentation i i will bottle it up in a pdf and send it to you so you can look at it um but really um you know it was a long presentation i sort of gave them more than they had at, they asked for but i thought it was good for, for them to understand sort of how we got to getting the 28 trees and what it takes to do so and so because they are you know this is the Covington cultural council which um, sort of like the, sort of like the their arts council they but they are intertwined um, a lot of the members are also of the Cummington Tree Alliance, which is a private group, um, sort of like Tree Northampton, but not, you know, as refined or or um, 
not organized, not a 501-3C, et cetera. So the, but they're trying to work towards getting the town to sort of embrace tree protection, tree plantings, tree preservation measures, et cetera. So um, so that was that was a nice that was, I had fun. I enjoyed myself. I always enjoy. I'm the one doing the talking. So as you can see, I've talked like for 20 minutes already today. <laughs> but but yeah, and, you know, and I, I did suggest to them and I at any time they would like to join one of our meetings. I hope you're OK with that. It would be nice to sort of make that connection. And then um, one last thing, the Amherst Tree Committee invited us to a potluck. Hmm. So did you get that email? Yes, I did. And my schedule's kind of up in the air. Um, okay. Let's see, when is it? I think it's next week. Next, I think it's next Wednesday. I'm just trying to find it. Hold on. Mm. Um, Henry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Dun, dun, dun. Does so, anybody else want to try to go to that? It's Tuesday the 13th and uh, at Kendrick Park downtown at 530. I unfortunately am going to be out of town next week. Yeah, I would have, but I'm busy. Yeah, I could, I could join you there, so send that on to me, please. Yep, I will forward this to you right, I'll forward it to you right now. And I've been going the past few years and it's it's very informal. And um so like if Wendy wanted to go or you know Yeah, yeah, it's definitely not not officials yeah. and and but it's wonderful to just talk to people. There were a lot of people from Greenfield there last year. They hmm. were on they are getting a lot done up there. Hmm. It's great to hear. Okay, Rich, you should be hitting your inbox shortly. Okay. Thank you very much. And that's all I have for my tree warden report. Sort of long-winded, I'm sorry. but um, So I'll have more information at our next meeting about the STO, about the uh, public shade training for Fern Street, and anything that uh, I might find interesting at the ISA International. Any questions? All right. Our next our next uh, item of business is the sec setback planting initiative. Sue, have you? No. no? Um, I haven't. I had just okay. keep getting busy with things. So um totally. we should set a deadline to work on the list. Yeah, I don't know what the next step is. I did put together a list of the addresses in the downtown area with the owners. There's about, I was just looking oh. about 71 distinct addresses. The list is long because um, there's several addresses like the condo buildings on South Street are on the list and they have many owners. So when you list addresses and owners, you get, get a longer list. But it's 71 different addresses. So I don't know what the next step is for that. Oh, thank you so much. I'm sorry. I haven't worked on it. Kent, are those addresses a combination of data that's been given to you or that came, that was collected by and sort of? It's basically the data from the survey that, that Molly organized of okay. the downtown area. Okay. And a few extras maybe added in that just go a little bit beyond the quarter mile radius. Okay. But it's all um, downtown Northampton. Okay. And I didn't filter out. I'm, I'm sure there's someone, well, I imagine there's some on Main Street, and presumably we don't want to be involved with uh, doing set, setback trees on Main Street at this point. Um, oh my goodness. Because the picture Main Street is gonna come by and um change change all that. So right, right. But actually I, there's not that many. I'm just looking I have a map and there's a few, but really they're mostly on um 
the side streets off of Main Street. Ken, well, while you're looking at that, could you tell me, do we include any locations on the corner of State Street, State and um, Elm as potential setback locations? Where the um, yeah, thing where the, the church is. Yeah. Actually, I'm not, maybe this uh, this map, I'm looking at the wrong thing. But yes, I'm pretty sure. I think so, yeah. That site is there. The owner information I have is still the um, the diocese. So I don't have the current owner of that. Yeah, Sh uh, Sunwood Builders owns the property now, Saul mm. Perry. Um, okay. So I, I have not seen, I don't know what, exactly what's going to happen right in that location, but I, if I remember correctly, during the picture Main Street conversation, because the property was still owned by the diocese, trying to get trees planted there was um, mm -hmm. up in the air because the property was for sale forever, et cetera. So potentially... If there's nothing going on for Picture Main Street, maybe this would be the time to have a conversation with Mr. Perry to see if he, what he's planning on planting, if anything, there, because that's a real, like if you think about it, right? You're sitting at the traffic light on New South Street. That's a big hole. It's yeah. a huge. Is he the owner yeah. of Sunwood Builders? He is, yes. Because it's on Kent's spreadsheet. Okay. That he made. Okay. Um, and Kent. And Paul and I actually really went and looked at it in person, that site. It is on your it is on there. It's marked as on hold Roman Catholic Church. Church right. property, very prominent spot. What's on hold, Sue? Because it's there it's under it's a construction site at this point they're working mm -hmm. on that property um i would think it would be a good time to reach out to the current owner yeah so mr a relationship with them so perry is the name of the guy thinking about yep. trees yep. Shaw, Shaw perry. he's uh he i worked with him uh at villa chill and the villa chill co-housing project mm. um to really just you know, tree preservation, tree planting. It's very nice person to work with, and uh, mm -hmm. I think very approachable. So it might be. Um, I I can actually do a little research if you want. Yeah, would you be I willing think. to talk to him? Sure, of course I would. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. That that's the one place where I'd say that potentially we could do a setback planting near Main Street that would most likely not be disturbed, but, um. But it's also the idea of putting it, I think, along the um, where the parking lot is on state along State Street. Yep. Yeah. Any indication of what's on tap for that site? Mm, no, I, I, other than I believe the church and the, the church building is going to stay and the rectory is going to stay. They're changing out the windows. Yeah. I've seen it slowly. They're sort of turning yeah. it over. It'll, yeah. you know, uh, Shaw Perry built that new building that's where Metric Auto used to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he built, that's his latest project in town. So, um, so yeah, I'm even more than happy to to get a hold of him. I make a little note for myself. So, um, okay. There's a lot of lawn there. Yeah. There, there is a lot of lawn there. Yeah, and I and I'm I'm sure that there is probably, uh, you know, some sort of uh, deed. Um, there's some sort of agreement about what the property can be used for because it was previously um, church property. So I'm not exactly sure if he if there's any kind of restrictions. So I, just reaching out to him, I think, would be to try to figure out what he's willing, if he's willing to host anything. Please do. Like I guess. Yeah, are they going to build on the lawn, or do they have to stay in the footprint? I know not, the paper not. recently said they're just starting with the rectory building that they're working mm -hmm. on now, and then later it will be determined what they'll do with the main church. But mm -hmm. as Kent said, there's that little parking lot area there. Yep. And I think what Kent's thinking, I don't want to speak for him, is that if you could get good trees, especially on the State Street part, 
you could mitigate some of the heat because there's just nothing on the other side of that street. It's just, there's no tree belt. It's just concrete right up to the buildings and it's hot, hot, hot. Right now there's a little bit of a planting strip. There's a chain link fence there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm guessing they'll probably take out and maybe they don't need that whole parking lot. I would imagine that the existing building envelopes probably have to stay the same. There was, such a stink even about removing the stained glass windows. Um, mm-hmm. And I know that the deed restriction is that the bishop can veto any proposed land use, which wow. is like, I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> so I think that's one reason it took so long to wow. sell. It's oh my literally goodness. The, the, the bishop of, of the archdiocese, I guess, has can, can veto. Mm-hmm. So you don't be go going and putting in like an LGBTQ support center there. You right. Not gonna right. Perpetuity? Like forever? Yes. I yep. think so, it yeah. Stays in, stays in the covenant of the deed. It's a really? deed restriction. Yep. It's a deed restriction. Yeah. They have, sim- wow. they have similar ones for the St. John Canius Church on yeah. all as well. And it's, same with the I church. That's uh, why turning them into condos is sort of one of the few things that you can really yep. do because if you make it businesses, then you have to have worry. Yep. You know, it's like, oh, yep. Housing, ho- housing seems to be the easiest, um, yeah, easiest model to follow for development for reuses of these places, this church area. So, mm. but anyway, for uh, trees, yeah, the corner of State and Elm, and then all yep. along State Street, yep, um, are yep. prime planting spots. I will. Reach out to him. I'll send him an email and I'll probably try to meet with him. Uh, so for the bigger project, how do we move yes. it along? What's the next step for this setback project? So I think once we the areas are identified, then we've got to probably, I would have to, I don't know if Christina... The other piece of this puzzle was that Christina was going to talk to the uh, Chamber of Commerce, and I think I don't, right. I don't think we've heard from her. So I don't know, Sue. Could you read? Would you mind reaching out to Christina? Sure. And then, I think she wanted us to be able to. Our, I think the idea we had. I have to look back at notes. Was that we want to be able to articulate what she's going to say to the chamber, and you wanted to be able to talk to the mayor before she talked to the chamber. So that nobody would be blindsided. Yep. So let's see. Which I, which I can also, I can talk, I can maybe speak to the mayor when I see her in person in a couple of weeks. I have need to notify the mayor's office and ward counselors. Yeah. I mean, I don't see, I don't see there being a problem with Christina talking to the chamber of commerce. And okay. Just, you know, and then we can, I can also talk to the mayor at the same time and just, it says Christina contacting Chamber of Commerce. I'll, yep. I'll okay. contact Christina and see if she has that on top of mind. Thank you. You're welcome. And then I think, Kent, to further that, after those two contacts have been made, and then I, I would suspect we could go and contact property owners either by finding out who they are actually and having a conversation with them or leaving um our door hangers at you know an, an appropriate place on the buildings where, wherever they may be um so i think that and then you know basically once we have agreement signed then we backfill with um you know we find the tree stock or hopefully backfill with some of the stock we have possibly I think would be the way to go. I think, you know, this is the part that gets hard because you really got to get down on the weeds. You've got to talk to people. You have to sort of knock on doors. It's kind of like running, you know, the trees are for election, right? You're running for election. Mm-hmm. You, gotta, you know, you got to, would you like a tree? Would you vote for this tree? You know? <laughs> right. But, oh, we uh, always saw it as a sales job. It is. Selling it is. the trees. It is. And their benefits. Yes. Um. Yes, my fa- I, my father was a fuller brush man, so I I probably could do sales all right. I remember him carrying <laughs> a bag in the house when I was a kid. But uh, that's wow. so cool. Do you still yeah. have the bag? No, 
No, I, he did it as a moonlighting. He moonlighted. He he was an insurance and real estate agent, and he used to work at night as a fuller brush salesman. But he had this cool, they had like these two suitcases, leather suitcases that were, this is not even part of the meeting, I'm sorry, but they were full. <laughs> they were full of like all of their products that they sold, which I thought, you know, you don't see any of that today. It doesn't. That's cool. Yeah. So here, here cool. we are. We're going to, maybe we should show up with samples of little trees and say, well, it's going to look like this or it's going to be like yeah. this. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, when it comes time for that outreach, you know, that sort of one-on-one -on -one, uh, sales pitch, I'm happy to partner with anyone else on on the you know, board, on the commission to to do that piece, you know, as as is required. Um, and there are also a few like ad hoc requests for setback plantings too. So that's another that have people have been hitting the setback sheet, um, the request sheet. And then I've received... I think five or six agreements that are right on my desk on a clipboard and a big envelope so I don't lose them. Uh, and I, we will try to, those, those setbacks have already been run through the tree tracker spreadsheet, I believe, Sue, because that's how they ended up getting to me. And those are the ones that Christina and I can sort of circle back with you to just double check. Um, yeah, I, um, Jen's away. Yes. Uh, we haven't met in a couple of weeks, but um, I'm assuming she's going to come back all refreshed and um, we'll dive in and start meeting and looking at them. I know I've been in touch with a couple people telling them to send the form to you. Yep, which recently. they have. They've, they've come to the uh, to the main office. Awesome. That's great. Yep. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe when you meet, maybe I could sort of pop in if I'm around. Okay. So we just... usually do Friday afternoons at 3 p.m. though. Okay. Which I know isn't that great for you. Okay, I can. I'll make it work. I, not not this. Not this. Not uh, this Friday. No, no, no. No, and not the next Friday. Just send me an email when you're going to meet next, and I'll try to be there. And if I'm not, I'll at least try to get you the information of the setback agreements that I have via email. Okay. All right. And then, um, yeah, we'll Kent. We'll get the tree belt addresses into the tree tracker for State Street. The ones up near that we walked. Yeah, time. we were thinking maybe right. probably some of those locust trees, but we thought that they would do well. Yeah, you know, locust trees would be fine for some of those. It could make a big impact along there. Yeah. So the tree belt ones, we can just. Get in mode, get in plans for the fall, and then maybe we can get a couple setbacks too. Sounds sounds wonderful. Any other questions about the setback initiative? Um, do you have any signs? A tree needs a home. Signs. Uh, yes. I do. I have quite a few of them, but I I have to correct. Um, I need a sticker to go over the email address. It's missing the .gov part for some reason. Mm -hmm. So I am going to reach out to Marcus Printing because I have a whole bunch of signs and I really don't want to make new ones. I don't want to throw these yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, sticker. But yes, I have some. Yep. Um, I'd like a couple of them. Okay. Yeah, we can always use Sharpie for the time being. That mm -hmm. works. Right. Okay. But, and then like the door hangers and other supplies, you have the yes, yes. little pockets and everything. Yep. But also the other thing too that I'm thinking about is those signs. I wonder if we are trying to if we're trying to capture setback planting, should we the email address on there should actually be changed to the Google, the Google email address or the Maybe a yeah. QR code. Yeah, maybe a QR code to actually go to that form. I was wondering about a QR code too. Yeah. So let me let me reach out to uh Dave from Marcus Printing. Yeah, because he could make on a sticker sticker back paper QR yep. codes. You could slap them on there. Yep. And just People keep using people are up to speed on QR codes more than they were, you know, yep. just a few years ago. Yep. I think that's great. QR code. Okay. 
A free tree needs a home. Yep. Yeah, it was free tree. This tree was provided by the city of Northampton, blah, 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 blah. Please, you know, consider, want another tree, hit the QR code and away you go. Pretty soon QR codes, the trees are going to come right out of your phone. <laughs> kind of cool. Um, yeah, I will get with him. I'll send him an email after the meeting just so I can sort of get his attention. Um. Any other questions about the setback? Okay, so I'll just sue will email me. Okay. All right. Um fall planting schedule. Um, I put that on there, and then after I put that on there, and I realized that Jen was gone away. So I don't really have I don't have any comments about the fall planting schedule other than two things. One, um obviously weather dependent you know usually we start like the third or fourth week of september depend and if it's cooler we can start earlier um we have a, a quite a bit of nursery stock in the nursery that would like to be planted so it'd be good to get that out of there but we will probably end um we will end up doing uh hopefully a bare root order for some project this fall again i still i like to go back so I went to Village Hill today, as I said earlier, where those succession sweet gums were, and they're doing really well. And there's there's five ashes that have to be removed. I would highly, I would like to do a bare root project on, that is uh, Mo Moser Street. Am I saying that right? Yeah. I think it's Moser Street, where all the other ashes are planted. And I'd also like to do a bare root project on Ridgeview. Because Ridge, Ridge, the ashes on Ridgeview are in the same condition that uh, the ones that were on um, Ice Pond Drive, because they were planted at the same time. Same. Mm -hmm. So, um, so those are like two projects in my mind for fall, big, bigger fall plantings that could really take up a, a bare root order, and we could plant a lot of trees in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Can you say them again? I did. I need to write them down. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Moser. Ridge, Moser. Yep. Yep. Uh, and um, Ridgeview. Ridgeview, that's right. You've been talking about that. And then, uh, and then filling in other planting locations. There's going to be stump locations that'll be ground. We we probably I don't have the count in front of me. But maybe we've taken down fifty trees so far this year, close to it. Um, so there'll be places to plant near stumps if there's enough soil volume. Mm -hmm. so again i'm sort of like that's why sue would be helpful i think for the three of us to meet jen you and i to sort yeah. of over like the tree tracker sheet the setbacks and then just talk about what's remaining on that list for planting that didn't get done this past spring that we want to tidy up on and moving on to other adventures so um i'm not sure we'll do a tree contract again this fall we might just buy um trees like we did from both nurseries uh, because it's a new fiscal year. So we mm. $10,000, we don't have to have a contract. So we might do the same thing that way. So that would mean going to Amherst nursery and tagging trees and then pulling off the uh, fall order that they have available at Chestnut Ridge or, or even Schichtels for that matter, if we need to. But so that's just like a quick recap of, I think what we've sort of all talked about for the last month or so, but I think without Je having Jen here too, to sort of chime in, I'm sure I'm missing something, but anyone have any questions? Okay. Uh, the next one is the JFK school planting update. And I, uh, David, uh, I thought David was going to be here, but he, unfortunately he's not. So what I can, I, I did join David um, and Chris Chamberlain and Tony Kuzneros, who's the school maintenance director, and Chris, who's a, a principal uh, landscape architect at Berkshire Design. We walked around JFK, uh, I think it was the 17th of uh, July, to sort of look at the existing landscape that's there and try to uh, identify locations that uh, the school department grounds folks would be okay with planting trees and I think we identified 
probably 15 to my, I want to say this loosely, but 15 to 18 locations possibly for tree mm. plantings. Mm. So um, I think given with the, the, the information that Chris received from Tony in that meeting, I think Chris and David are going to refine the plan that they have based on tree locations. Um, one of the things that, uh, that we talked about was planting in the front of the school um, where there's a very large wide open area yeah. and planting um, succession trees. Uh, if, if you're looking at JFK and your back is to bridge road there, it's lined. The old entrance is lined with Norway maples on both sides. So we talked about potentially planting succession trees on both sides um, because I, you know, those trees are, some of them are in good condition. Some are in fair and a few are in poor, but given the fact that, Nori maples are not long lasting and trying to get a succession row behind it. Um, what, what do you mean by succession planting? Um, so planting, planting new tree species that are more resilient and knowing that the tree that's existing, that's there. Oh, uh, essentially, um, you know, likelihood, it's last. Yeah, yeah. The likelihood, likelihood of that tree failing is higher just because of the species. Yeah. Oil conditions, the, yeah. you know, okay. yeah. So su succession plantings would be trying to plant, getting a tree planted. So we're not starting from scratch after the removal. We already have an, uh, a tree that has some years of establishment under its belt. Right. Um, so there more information to come on that with probably some plan. But the, I think the goal, and correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone remembers, but I believe we were hoping to do plantings in the spring of 25. So sort of an, maybe an Arbor Day or Earth Day week planting like we've done in the past and maybe getting the Rotary Club and maybe it, it, I don't know if they have an environmental environmental club at JFK but I'm not they must have some sort of environmental studies or must be starting environmental studies so it'd be nice to reach out to the principal which David will take care of all of that to see if we could get some students like we did at Leeds School and and Jackson and Ryan Rotary had students with parents, so I think that was that's a, was a great was a great uh, mm. great results and a nice collaboration. So that's that's that. I don't have anything else to report, and I've talked this whole meeting, and I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, Bonnie. You have to listen to all this all over again. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Is there any other business not anticipated by the chair? And did I did I forget anything to put on the agenda? I don't. I, is there anything that you would like to see on the next agenda? It'd be nice to have a speaker one of these days. Okay, we can. I don't know who that might be. I will. Would you like me to find a speaker? Um. You know, it was, I think we learned a lot when we had Andrew Putnam. Yep. Um, because we were looking at you know private trees and that kind of stuff. I don't know. I, other people, please do chime in. But I think we grow when we once in a while have somebody come in, and he is so knowledgeable. Um, or Christina Bazanson. Long ago, she did one on when we were trying to think about setbacks a little bit more, we, she was talking about that in root volume. Yep. I don't know, just throwing out ideas that, um, hmm. anybody else have any idea of, we had the guy from Worcester. That was interesting. Yep. We had Alex, we had Alex Sherman from Springfield to talk about spider lantern fly. Mm -hmm. um, would, would somebody like, one of the operators of the nursery. Oh. Uh, you know, the Amherst nursery or something like that. Just talking yep. about the their process. Yep. Actually, that's a great, that's great. I mean, so uh, what I'm hearing is that we like varying degrees of technical, like we like the technical information. We like people's experience that have been in the trade. Um because we've had we've had a little bit, you know, we've talked about policy, we've talked about setback plantings, we talked about rooting volume, we had um, we talked about pest spotter lantern fly, which I think it would be good probably to do a pest update. Maybe we could get 
someone down the line more towards the winter. Um, Elizabeth Barnes, who works for MDAR, uh, she's done a lot of presentations and she made, she might be willing to do a presentation for us on pest threats. So that might be something that might be, inter yeah. that might be interesting. We had Greg Beck, Beck talk about pests one time yep. too. Yep. Um, and oh, and he talked about amendments one time. That's when we started. Yep. yep. Soil amendments. Yep. I mean, if we, we have the capacity, I mean, I think we have the capacity to do a guest, one guest speaker a month. If we're going to, we're going to meet twice a month, unless you think that would be too much. Um, and they don't have to speak like, you know, for an hour, it could be just for 20 minutes. Tell us about your print. Yeah. Program. Telling about, tell us about your, your production process for nursery. Mm -hmm. Uh, nursery stock and planting stock how you go about it show us a few slides that would be great um that would be interesting it would be interesting to learn about these whatever they're called cultivars or so we could be a little bit more articulate when we no yep. i could be a little bit more articulate when i sell setbacks so when people are saying you know asking questions about what what's up with these trees and um okay Somebody from Smith that in their botany world, you know, talking about cultivars and yeah, um, I like that idea. Okay, because for instance, sometimes people will say, "Oh, these trees are grafted," and th th perked my curiosity. You know, what do they? You know what's that all about? What are they grafting? You know, is it what's the different in the stock between the graft and the mm -hmm. you know what's a what's growing above ground? It's obviously pretty sophisticated. Yeah, it is, and I you don't think about it until you real you know until you take one apart and you realize that you planted it at the graft instead of at the flare, which. <laughs> I can say I've, I've done that in my past years, my past life. So, um, yeah, these are all, I mean, I could, I can reach out to John at Amherst Nursery to see if he's willing to do a presentation. Um, at, for, as far as the nursery stock goes, I, there is, um, Nancy, Nancy Booley, who works for Schmidt. She gave a really nice presentation at the Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters Association a few years ago about their um, proven winners, proven proven plant stock that they have cultivated and cultivars. Uh, she's out in Washington State. I don't know if she'd be willing to oh. do a Zoom presentation. She may, um, but it might. Just the thought. I don't want to make a whole bunch of work for you, but no, it's not. Travels, I mean, it's, it's, it's especially. It, it, as you go to the international conference, maybe you'll yes. get some ideas. That's we had. That's what happened last year. You went to the conference, you got a couple ideas, yes. and we had some speakers. Yes. That's all. Yes. No, I think it's great. I mean, I'm going to Francesco is going to be speaking uh, at uh, the ISA International, so I'm going to get to connect with him again. So that's always, and I've been in contact with him since then, since this past winter, which is, which is really interesting. Um, so, I mean, there's just, there's so much information available that I just don't, like, I don't have enough time to digest it all. I it can't yeah. freeze every day, all day. It has to be, I have to mow the lawn once in a while, you know, so. <laughs> else, and I but, guess we can all think about what's most useful for this group in terms of, yeah. you know, what is, some I, people I, on here have a lot of technical and technical yeah. Um, I mean, I, I like Rich's. I like Rich's idea of uh, thought of having a nursery person come and talk about production method, you know, and maybe that person could also cross over to talk about cultivars and growing of cultivars, you know, instead of having two different people. But, um, and then I, I encourage anyone, any of you, please, to send me an email of either someone you like to have speak or another. If we leave the meeting I today, you have the different thoughts. Please don't hesitate to share it. Um, 
send me a text message. If you're thinking about it and you're in a place where there's no email, just text it to me. That's fine. I will answer that pretty instantaneously. Um, so. And um, when's our next meeting? Uh, I believe I, September 4th. It is. Thank you. You did say that. Yep. That's all I can think of. Okay. Any other business not anticipated by the chair? Just volunteering my services, not necessarily volunteering for a presentation today, but if you have any quick and dirty questions about what's the cultivar, what's on wood, what's um, what is grafted, what this kind of stuff. That's something I have a background in. So, um, you know, ah. feel free to shoot questions in my direction. Okay. Uh, if I can answer them, I'm happy to. Yeah. Thank you. You got it. Uh, okay. All right. Does anyone have anything else before we... We're adjourning a little early today. Uh, Bonnie's like, let's uh, put my screen on. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Got her attention. <laughs> yeah, she's ready to go when the when more commissioners are ready to go. Um, all right. So just a, just a quick recap. So I'll reach out to Shaw Perry. Um, I'm going to reach out to Marcus Printing to get the setback free uh, free uh, good trees. Free trees to good homes, I think, to work on the QR code. Um, Kent and Sue are going to sort of connect. Just sort of a follow up on the setback plantings for downtown, right? I'm not. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just saying that's what you said you might yes. do. Okay. Yes. Um, Already spots for fall. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to. Sorry. Can talk to the mayor about that. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, and then uh, I reached out to Christina to arrange a, to talk to her about um, talking to the chamber and getting no. ideas and input no. on Kent, how best to approach people. Okay. Ken, just quickly that the uh, locations that are the 70 locations plus or minus, are those on a map? I can, I can put them on a map. Yeah, that, that would be helpful visually so I could bring that with me. And then just could you, is it possible to show the ward delineation if there is any? Yeah, actually, it's probably I on. I might already have a map that probably let you do that because I've mapped the the data from Molly and you can select setback trees. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I put a ward overlay on that. It, I think it would it would be good if I could get that and just for that particular, this pilot project that we're trying to do so just so i can have something to just a talking point okay. if it's possible that would be really helpful um i'm going to reach out to uh john from amherst nursery and then uh i will think about other guest speakers and then anyone else please um think of any guest speakers you might want to hear uh rich thank you for going to the potluck in Amherst appreciate that you're going to be hopefully you're going to go there be able to represent us and um Sue just send me an send me an email when you and Jen are ready to connect or have time to connect okay about the we'll do. planting okay all right okay that's I'm going to save this piece of paper right here so I don't lose it uh <laughs> Anyone else have anything before we entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting? Nothing. Okay. Can I get a, uh, someone want to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I move we adjourn. Do we have I a move. second? All right. Any discussion on the meeting or the adjournment motion? Seeing none, everyone in favor, raise your hands, please. Thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>